So this particular book is set in Ice Windale. Uh, what is the actual title for the book? The title of the book is Ice Windale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Already very scary. So what, what, what is the story that you can tell me about this partic- particular adventure that you're introducing? Like, all I can tell you is that it's a horror story. Um, but unlike Curse of Strahd, which focused on sort of the tropes of gothic horror, this story, set in Icewind Dale, focuses more on um, modern horror. But it's all about isolation, paranoia, secrets being kind of uh, trapped with a bunch of other people in a hostile land and uh, having to deal with some, some terrifying threats. It's a, it's a story set in Icewind Dale, not like any other story we've ever set in Icewind Dale. And for those who don't know, um, Icewind Dale is a piece of the realms, but it's separated from the rest of the realms by this mountain range called the Spine of the World. And um, so uh, it is geographically isolated and far to the north. It's the place where people go to lose themselves or to escape from their pasts or to test their mettle against an unforgiving frontier. It's very much a frontier-like environment. And because it's isolated, you can't expect to get help <laughs> from anywhere. You really are kind of um, kind of on your own. And um, the story centers around a, a group of adventurers who are dealing with the fact that winter never seems to end here. Um, and there are terrible things out in that dark cold. And those things are getting closer. And there are secrets out there buried under the snow and ice And if you want to go find them, that's great. Uh, But the risks may not be worth the reward. I can only suspect we're going to, uh, and I, because of like any good horror story or sci-fi story, a lot has to be a secret. Otherwise you kind of ruin the whole point of playing the adventure. Yeah. Which is why I'm sort of shying away while I may have been more comfortable in, in years past talking about some of the key aspects of the story. I'm really kind of, shying away from that and speaking in generalities so as not to su- not to spoil any of the secrets and surprises of which there are many this is a this is a good sized adventure it's 320 pages wow okay and that's healthy it's it's a combination of there's like this um, fun narrative through line but then there are all these delightful terrifying satellite locations and sort of side stories that DMs can kind of take and run with. Are there going to be interesting, perhaps, monsters in this as well? Yeah, in fact, there are more new monsters in this adventure than any other 5th edition adventure we've published so far. Part of that is simply because um, the monster manual, as big as it is, doesn't have a ton of cold-dwelling creatures. And so we're just sort of fleshing out that empty space. Uh, But also the story itself um, challenged us to pull some monsters uh, out of D&D's past, as well as do some fun novel riffs on existing monsters, which I know I can see the smirk on your face. You know what I'm talking about. Um, There there are a couple of variations (laughs) of, of, of monster manual monsters in here, which are quite fun. And we think DMs will really, really like. But, uh, you know, the, as I was saying, like, it's a bit, the, one of the reasons why this adventure is so big is because it's, it's bestiary, it's creature section, is, is really huge. And that's kind of like, is that a key element to this in, in some ways? Is that, you know, especially for if you've been playing D&D a long time and you're very familiar with monsters, I know what Jelena's Cube is, I know what this is, I know what that is. But, like, if you present that to me, like say there was a goblin, but also it has like a goblin shark's teeth or something. That's yeah. like, there has to be the element, right? With a, a, a monster in a horror story that you don't understand how it works. Like the yes, straw zombie. That, that is exactly one of the reasons why it, the idea that, that in horror, you want to be surprised. And if your players are as well versed in the monster manual as, you know, the DM is, some of that surprise can quickly be diluted because the, cre- the players will know what they're up against. Part of the goal was to present new threats that the DM can spring on the players and the players will go, Oh my God, I don't know what that is. What's its AC? What are its hit points? Ah! 
it's just like that game over man <laughs> moment <laughs> of like that is not how that monster is supposed to work <laughs> yes yeah that kind of fear factor yeah and a lot yeah. of the monsters have a kind of a some a bit of a horrific quality to them and maybe some have a cute quality it depends on your perspective there's sort of a we've talked about horror cute before but there is there is some horror cute going on yeah it's i know no i one of the one of the sort of behind the screen philosophies of adventure design in my book is you kind of have to have a balance in terms of mood and atmosphere. you can't just go with D and D um, particularly in a horror story. Sometimes you have to break the horror, break the mood, get people's spirits back up so you can tear them down again. Um, and one of the ways to do that is to put in some quirky fun or cute little things. And there's lots of that in this adventure too. What scares you like growing up? What movies, what books, what concepts scared you the most? And even today, excluding current events. I mean, one of the, one of the things that, one of my favorite horror experiences growing up that scared me um, and which served as inspiration for this story was the um, John Carpenter's remake of The Thing. I love that story uh, because it is about a group of people who are kind of alone. There's no backup. You know, uh, they, they're dealing with a threat they don't understand at first, a creature that can turn into other creatures and hide in their midst. And that idea of, of hiding in one's midst, having the threat be there, but you can't see it is utterly terrifying to me. Um, and it's analogous to a lot of things happening in the real world. Um, uh, that the idea of the enemy walking among you and uh, not knowing who to trust is, is a huge, um, uh, has, has, a, has a big effect on me. Uh, and uh, that theme is prevalent in this story, uh, that the, the person you look at through the blowing snow walking toward you down the street is so bundled up in cold weather clothing that you don't know what they are. They kind of look human from a distance, but for all you know, it could be three kobolds in a parka. It's just... <laughs> You just don't know. Um, that's the best scenario. <laughs> or, that's probably the best scenario. Or it's something much, 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 much worse. And, uh, you know, the, the, that, sort of, that sort of terror is the kind of thing that I love to play with. And has um, the, that kind of thing uh, I picked up from watching these movies in my childhood and my youth. I remember, uh, actually, I, I actually remember watching the black and white, The Thing. Where it was a oh, vegetable yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I've seen that one recently. Actually, that, it's kind of a weird one because it's a very talky movie. It's very like they 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 clearly had a very limited budget, and so what they mostly had were just humans talking to each other and not really showing anything. Yeah, and they save the budget for like the last ten minutes of the film. Yeah, when the creature shows up and there's some sparkly stuff that happens. They had about ten minutes of Boris Karloff, and uh, that was about it. And the yeah. little vegetable blood pods. Yeah, um, I, I will. I, I'm still fond of that movie for other reasons. It's a, uh, but yeah, the, the original John Carpenter is the thing, and I actually didn't. I didn't mind the uh, sort of sequel or prequel, um, just because I just love that. That's what scares me as well. Just the isolation plus you don't know who you can trust. Um, yeah, and isolation and paranoia are two. That coupled with secrets are basically themes that we hung uh, Rock Frost Maiden on. So everything, everything in this story ties back to one of those three themes. Secrecy, paranoia, isolation. Why do we like to be scared so much? What's, what's, um, what's thrilling it, about that? It, it triggers chemicals in the body that uh, remind you that you're alive. And, and um, you know, uh, that's basically the long and short of it is uh, it. And it's a, it's a momentary change from the normal. And so when you're scared, your adrenaline starts to kick in. Uh, certain primal impulses start to race through your brain. Uh, suddenly you're on guard against um, all sorts of, you know, potential threats and stuff like that. And then eventually it passes and 
So it's sort of a, a break in the normal. And I think that we like to be scared when we're in a safe place um, to get that reaction without the danger, to get, that, get those chemicals flowing without the actual threat of being eaten or otherwise, you know, disposed of. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd watch the thing in a cabin in Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, that's part of it, right? Like, yeah, um, it's sometimes when I'm out walking the dog at night, I'll cycle through the music on my cell phone and find like the creepiest music I can find. And it has a very different effect on me than if I'm listening to that same music while typing on my computer at home. Right. Uh, it's all situational. Um, the other thing about being scared, about liking to be scared is... Um, it gives you an appreciation for um, for normalcy in a way. Yeah. That uh, it, if if you're you don't want to, no one wants to be scared for too long, right? No. <laughs> it's always a momentary thing, but then you you feel grateful for the return to to normalcy, to a non-scared state. Right. Because a long-term scared state is not necessarily sustainable. <laughs> well, we're kind of figuring that out this year. Yeah, um, we're... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, in, oh. 20, in 2020, this conversation holds special relevance. Oh, this is going on much longer. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And there are, I mean, depending on who you are, you probably, you know, had periods in your life where you were scared for long periods of time, and that's not fun. No. But the thing about a Dungeons and Dragons adventure is it's meant to be a ride. It's meant to be a trip. You're supposed to be having fun while you're being scared. And that's really the goal of this adventure is the players are having a great time. Yes, they're being scared, but it's all within the context of this story and you're learning things and you're you know, you discover, you know, the party unity is the thing that's going to get you through this. And that's a good message. And uh, D&D is a safe place to explore these sorts of horrible, dreadful themes. Whereas isolation in the real world just yeah. sucks. Pre-order Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden now on D&D Beyond. And get exclusive pre-order rewards, including digital dice.